Good morning guys and welcome back to Barham Engines. <laughs> Right, so today's video, we're going to be doing a lot of techie stuff today. We're going to be showing you how to fit valve guide liners, uh, valve seat inserts. We've also got, it's a bit of a special, we've got Isaac's first bit in getting involved in doing a bit of videography and a bit of presenting really. He's wanted to do it for some time and it's just building up the courage. We all know that it's, it's quite nerve wracking and a bit weird talking to a camera with no one there. But he's going to give it a go today. So yeah, let us know down in the comments what you think of that. Uh, fair play to him, bless him. It'd be nice, really. We'd, we'd quite like over time to sort of get our, our staff involved, really, and make a bit more of a, rather than just hearing me speak, you know, hear what's going on amongst all of us, really, and what everyone's got to say. So, yeah, Paul will be in the video today. Yeah, so that's great. Before we start, we have got um, some really good news um, about Barham Engines and the way we're going um, in the future. We're going to be making two or three quite big changes. I'm not going to go too much into it um, this on this video, maybe the next video. We've got some organising to do and some plans to make, but um, yeah, really exciting and it should make a big difference to the channel. So look out for that. Well, I don't know whether I've showed you this before, but this is the guide sleeving system. So this cylinder head here is off the 1500 pre-cross flow. And as you can see, it's got casting guides. So if we show you underneath here, you cannot renew these guides. So they're sloppy as hell. So what we do is we sleeve them with a bronze insert, basically. Uh, so this, these ones here are a 5 16 kit, which we've got here. Um, so what we do, first of all, is we've got a special reamer, which we've just bought new, actually. Um, at a bargain price of 280 quid plus the VAT. So as you can see, it's got like a, it's got a sort of guide on the end of it. Um, and this bit here is the size that matters. So that goes down the existing hole and then it cuts the right diameter to get a nice interference fit for the guide sleeve that you're using. So obviously 5 16th sleeve, 5 16th kit. What we do, we put that over the end of there and that sits in that slot there which is air operated and all that does really is when you turn the air on it pushes that down into the seat and what you do is you find a right sort of insert to to fit the seat so you've got one side 30 degree one side 45 if it's a 45 degree seat it sort of goes in like that uh, yeah there so that just ensures that the cutter is basically staying true to the existing seat there or thereabouts, just so you're not sort of miles off. And what you do when you cut that, when you cut them down, you then got to push the insert down the hole. So what we use is this with an air hammer. The sleeve goes over here, sits inside that groove, and it basically just hammers it down into and you sort of fill through the other end and get to the depth you want just so you've got sort of about the same amount sticking out the bottom. So once you've done that, as you can see, what we do, we've got a cutter here with a little pilot on the end. So that's roughly slightly smaller than 5 sixteenths. And then you just top them down to the base like we've done, done so there. Hi guys, Isaac here at Berm Engines. And today I'm going to be taking you through the build of the MGB motor. So this is the MGB cylinder head. Uh, which I actually went through about a week and a half ago now. And yes, yeah, so that's all ready. As you can see, I've painted it today. It's a nice maroon colour. Should all be good there now. So we got the MGB crank spinning up here on the crank balancer. As you can see, it's fairly out not awful because it's still on the scale but uh, yeah so we're gonna have to do something about that as you can see I've had to take a fair little bit off of this end um, yeah it's fairly out of balance but we're getting it down to about here on the scale now so that's yeah it's getting there so now I've got the front pulley on the uh, crankshaft here on the balancer as you can see I've taken a fair bit out 
in these holes. That's all balanced up. Just got to get the clutch and flywheel on that end and get those balanced as well. So we've just had a set of pistons turn up for the MGB, as you can see, fairly nice pistons, all new. Um, so I've gone to try and put them down the bore. Obviously it says plus 40 on the piston and well, they're more than tight, they won't go in. And so we realized that these are the wrong ones. It's only been bored out to plus 20. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get a new set. So I just thought I'd come outside and clear up my mess from painting earlier so that Lee doesn't have a go at me. There we go, we'll go hide those somewhere so he doesn't realize I left them out. I've topped all those now. Now what I normally do is leave the base for a minute because as you can see, you've got a nice little leading taper on the base of that, which is ideal for catching the ball. Now, when I say ball, what you've got is these carbide balls that come in various sizes and what we do we measure the stem of the valve so if we start with the exhaust first you've got 308 there now what we want to do is we want a ball to get about the right clearance we want a ball that's about three thou bigger than that because by the time you push it down and it goes back you've probably got about two thou running clearance which is ideal so We've got a ball here we've got they go up from about they range from about 308 in here to 315 something like that so as you can see there this one's 311 so that's three thou bigger than 308 perfect so what we do is we get the ball with us some tweezers and sit the ball in the top of the guide like that then we get the solid drive into the air hammer and we just feed that ball down now the reason i left the bottom of the guide on is because when the ball goes through the guide rather than if you topped it off it would fire out the bottom and sometimes you lose the ball and these are about 60 quid each so we keep that sleeve like that and then the bottom of the sleeve catches it and then all you do is you just sort of knock it out with that and um, catch it in your hand so it's a bit of a bracket this is So we just push that ball out. So we've run the ball down these two, and if we try a valve in there now, so you've got very slight, probably let's say one or two thou clearance there, which is perfect. You don't want it too snug being bronze because if it heats up, it could, it could grip and a uh, catastrophe could happen. So you need a little bit of a little bit of play there, but no, that's absolutely perfect. By the exhaust, job done. These um, these circlips are well tight. Little circlips. They're well tight, though, yeah. You have to sort of. How's the pins, all right? Yeah, fine. The old ones go in quite nicely, but these obviously new ones are quite tight. I guess they're meant to be tight, obviously, to a certain extent. Yeah, they usually are pretty tight. Now they're quite tight, the gutter pin is quite tight the rod, and it's quite tight the piston, so a bit of wet and dry. Tighter the better, mate. They're, uh, they move freely, but it's no play in them, so. Very nice, well Very done. Better. It's got all these bits there, look. I've got to order the inserts for this. Forgot to order them. Yeah. Better get that done, and I? Is that, is this all been done? That's all been cleaned. Um... I think John's going to order some tappets, followers, sorry. Oh, yeah. We're using the same push rods, aren't we? Most yeah. Of the springs are right on the spring retainers are fine, aren't they? Yeah, they're all right. Obviously, they're not stretch bolts, I mean, for 1960, are they? So. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. No, these are all right. So no, no corrosion. I mean, that's a little bit rope for that, but. I can imagine trying to get hold of another one is uh, not the easiest thing. No. Well, that can be replaced, can it? All right, mate. <laughs> you crack on. You're doing really well there. Have you recording that? Yeah, Good lad. It feels weird, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we've got the guides in here. Now on the 1500. 
Um, but I've got to order inserts. I forgot all about that. You're probably thinking while I was doing it why they why they were so rough, but no, we've got to unlead it anyway. So I'm going to measure these up, and go and order some valve seat inserts. Inlets are all right. We don't replace them. So just got to cut them, but I won't cut them until we've until we put the inserts in the exhaust. Done my usual. Just put my vernier down. Obviously got distracted and just popped it on the side. And now I've got to spend 10 minutes finding it. Brilliant. Mate, have you... Ah, oh, it's all right, I've got it. Here it is, 10 minutes later. So what we do when we order valve seat inserts is I use a company called Gosnays. And Gosnays Engineering, uh, we get... Actually, that, um, that cutter I showed you earlier, the one for the guide sleeve in, and that's where I got that from. But basically, when we go to order, when we're doing an unleaded, we get the exhaust valve, measure the head of the valve. As you can see here, it's 31 and a half. So what I tend to do is go about half a mil over that. So if we go to 32, aim for 32 external, internal is, I've measured the port is 27, I better go and check that. 26 internal. So we've got 26 internal, 32 external, write that down. And the depth, usually I aim for about six mil. Um, on something like this, on, on a little cross flower or a mini, something like that, I aim for about six mil. So if we went for six mil, we'd probably do it about five and a half mil deep. That leaves about half a mil protruding to, to top afterwards and blending with the surface of the head. So to do that, six, we've got 32, 26, six, we need four of them. So what we do, is we open up the, the Gosnay's valve seat page on their website. And as you can see, we've got imperial and metric sizes here for all the inserts and these are the part numbers. So if we go down to say 32 or around 32, you've got here some odd sizes because obviously some of them are imperial. So. 31.93 I mean it's near enough 32 and then you want like a 26 inside the depths are not too important of the insert because you can pull it to whatever depth you want and then just top it off so if we have a look at these here you've got the right inside and the, the you know the pretty pretty correct outside that's the C1250 and all these numbers sometimes you have to compromise because they don't list them all in stock We'll give them a bow now and see if they've got some of these get something ordered now checked all the valves they all go down the hole so what we do is we just take this deburrer tool here and just make sure that there's no burr at the top here where we've topped the guides off Okay, just check a valve in there, make sure they're all right. An inlet. There we go, they're all good. So what we do now is we turn it over and we're just gonna top these guides off down to the base here. That's where the valve stem seal sits. Um, I run the deburring tool down there, check that the valves go all the way in again, and that's done. So as you can see, the inserts have turned up and they're slightly too small on the inside. So all I do is just stick them in the lathe and turn them out to what I want. Uh, so these are 26 mil. You can see I've put two in already. And they look about right really, so I'll get this set up, get these other two in and um, just finish it off. I hope you enjoyed that guys. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, like, comment down below, and we'll see you in another video. Have a great weekend. Cheers guys.